Welcome. In a previous video, I did an unboxing of this ingenious EWS 357 AP access point. I'll put a link in the description of that video. I'll actually put a link to a playlist um, of any other videos I make of this. Also, if you find this video helpful and you want to buy one of these using Amazon, I'll put a link in the description to the product there. And it's my Amazon affiliate link and it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be walking through the setup of this uh, access point. And as I said in the previous video, this was uh, provided to me by Ingenious, but they did not pay me anything for this. They did not ask me to make this video. They um, you know, gave it for review and left everything else up to me. So I have this plugged in here to Ethernet cable to this PoE adapter, and it's plugged into the PoE side. And then I have on the LAN side, I have this plugged into my 2012 MacBook. So now I'm going to switch over to the MacBook and configure it and get this thing up and running. Okay, so what I'm gonna to want to do is open up my system preferences. And I'm walking through this on a Mac, but the settings would be the same on a PC. You just have to go to the network settings on the PC. So I'll go down here to network. I'll click on my ethernet interface on this using DHCP and I'll click manually. And I'll type in 192.168.1.10. So the router, the Wi-Fi access point is gonna get 1.1, so we want a different IP address. So then I'll change the subnet mask from 255.255 to 255.0, and I'll hit apply. Now if I open the terminal, I should be able to ping the access point at 1.1, and there we go. So it can take a while to boot up the access point. I plugged this in a couple minutes ago, so it's ready to go. Next I'm gonna open up a web browser, and I'll type in the IP address, 192.168.1.1, I'll hit enter. It'll ask for my username and password, so I'll type in admin and admin. I'll hit log in. You know, the default on this is admin, admin, and that makes it real easy to get in at the beginning, but you absolutely have to make sure you change that. Some uh, vendors will give you a unique password for the device, and that can be better too, but either way, you need to change your password. So if you're leaving it admin, admin, there's a chance you could get hacked. Now we're in the uh, interface, so I'll go through these settings, but first I'm just gonna go through getting this on my personal network. So I'll click here on Network Basic, and it says IPv4 settings. I'm gonna click Static IP, and then I've chosen a free IP address on my regular network, and that would be 192.168.7.22, and I'll change the gateway to 7.1, and everything else I'll leave the same. I'll hit Save here, and at the bottom here it'll say Wait for Changes to be Applied, and I'll hit Apply. And now it says, uh, please wait, you know, 57 seconds, uh, browser will redirect to new address. So I'll let this count down. And when this is done, I'll unplug this and I'll plug it into my regular network. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that, I'll click on my system preferences and I will click on this ethernet and I'll change that back to use DHCP and I'll hit apply. And now I want to connect my laptop up to my regular network. Um, I'm just using on the default Wi-Fi that I already have. Um, you can also just plug it into Ethernet and then we'll set up this access point and then we'll switch the Wi-Fi on this laptop up to that access point, the new one. Okay, so it's rebooted. I'll go in here, I'll type uh, the IP address I changed it to, which was 7.22. I'll type in admin for the username, admin for the password, and I'll hit log in. I'm gonna say not now for saving the password. And now we'll go through this interface a little bit. So on overview, when you log in, overview says the device status, and this talks about device information, gives you uh, your firmware version, uh, current local time, and that is correct. Let me check my watch. That's off a little bit, actually. It's 12.03. So this will automatically sync it. It probably just hasn't done that yet. Uh, memory information, it has the local LAN information, the IPv4, IPv6, has the wireless LAN for 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, and some statistics down here. So I'll click on connections, and it shows no connections because we haven't set up Wi-Fi and connected to it yet. And then we have real time, and this is going to have probably like a little bar chart here, or a line chart. So we'll go to Network Basic, and we already looked at this. You can set up IPv4 and IPv6. You can also set up Spanning Tree Protocol here. If we click on Wireless, we'll get this. We can change the device name. We can, uh, it looks like the country is locked down. If I uncheck this, does it stay locked? Yeah, I'm not sure how to change that country. 
So we see the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz options here. And 2.4 is BG, N, and AX. And AX is the Wi-Fi 6. And then on 5 gigahertz, we see AN, AC, AX. So on this operation mode, we click on it, it says access point, WDS access point, or WDS station and the five gigahertz says the same thing. We have channel HT mode, we have uh, 20 megahertz, and then we have, you can do 20, 40, or 40, and for five gigahertz you can do 80, 40, or 20. And then channel configuration, if we click that, it opens up a new tab here. We can, looks like you can choose uh, which channels you want. I'm just gonna leave this as auto. And then we have client limits. You can enable or disable, and it says we're at 127 right now. And this multicast to uni unicast stream conversion, it's enabled. And I'll just leave this up on the screen. You can read through that. And then we have access point detection. You can hit scan, and that will show you any access points on your network. Now we'll get here into the meat of it. We have wireless settings, we have enabled, then we have SSID here. So we can change this to whatever we want um, the SSID to be. So I'll say new, I'll just say ingenious AP. And then we can choose if it's 2.5 or five gigahertz. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You could uh, turn on two of them and you could have um, like your Inge ingenious AP and then an ingenious AP5 and then uh, make this just on 5 gigahertz and this just on 2. You can also just have one here that has both frequencies on it and we can go to edit and this will come up and we can change the SSID here so we'll say ingenious AP. Uh, you can check if you want to hide the SSID. You can turn on client isolation so this uh, keeps um, clients from talking to each other on the network. And then there's VLAN support, uh, L2 isolation disabled. So here you have band steering. So you can turn this on and you can set this to prefer five gigahertz, uh, force five gigahertz or band balance. So uh, depending on if you want, um, you know, if you automatically connect to five gigahertz, force people or to balance them out, you can uh, enable this option. And then it has this band steering, I'm not completely sure what that one's for. So I'll disable that for now. And then we have the security mode. So I'll choose WPA2 PSK, and then we'll type a passphrase in here. So I'll set that to ingenious pass. I'll change that uh, after the video, obviously. <laughs> and we have radius settings and radius accounting. I don't use any of that. And then fast roaming. It says can be enabled to facilitate client roaming across access point under the same ESS WLAN. The option is available upon choosing WPA2 PSK or WPA2 Enterprise. So I'll leave that disabled. And then it says wireless MAC filter. We have ACL mode is disabled. So it looks like you can set an allow and deny uh, MAC address list here. And we have this wireless traffic shaping. You can turn this on and it says, uh, you can set a download limit and upload limit. So I'm just gonna set what I said here. I changed the SSID and set a password. So I'll hit save here. And it says waiting for changes to be applied. I'll wait there for a sec. Uh, if we go down here, uh, what you can also do here is we can enable one of these and call it um, like say ingenious guest. And we can click that as a guest network. And then when you turn that on, you have the guest option. So you can set up its own DHCP for the guest network. But I'm not going to do a guest network right now on this. And then it says management VLAN settings. So you can enable this. So I'll hit save on this page. And now I'll apply this setting. And this should set up our new SSID. Okay, the new SSID is set up. So I'll connect to it. Okay, it's gonna ask for my password, I'll type that in. I'll join. Okay, now I'm connected to the uh, ingenious Wi-Fi access point. I'll open up a terminal here. I should be able to ping here. Okay, so I'm on the new network. So let's uh, finish up here looking at the interface. So we were in wireless last time when we reset the wireless access point. We go down here to management, we can click on advanced. And this is controller settings. So this is if you have a controller, like a management controller to manage multiple access points, <clears throat> which I'm not using. It has SNMP settings here, has CLI settings, and SSH settings. So I'm guessing you can SSH into this. And then HTTPS uh, status is set to enable, and then HTTPS forward is set to disable. So I'll probably end up eventually setting this to enable, so it's just HTTPS to this interface.
and then it has email alerts. So you can set this up, you can connect it to an SMTP server and have it send you uh, alert emails. Next we'll go to time zone and uh, this has automatic get date and time. So you can manually set it or get it automatically. Let's see if this is uh, updated yet. No, it's still behind. So I'll check that later. And if it hasn't updated, I'll update it. Sometimes it can be too far off and you need to manually set it and then resync it. So I'm not sure how this one works. And we have time zone set to auto detect. If I uncheck this, yeah, it gives me a drop down list. So next we have a Wi-Fi scheduler. So we have auto reboot setting. So you can turn this on and you can have it automatically reboot itself at a designated time. Next we have the Wi-Fi scheduler. So you can enable this and you can um, tell it to turn Wi-Fi on and off at specific points of time. If we click on tools over here, we have a ping tool, a trace route, NS lookup, speed test, LED. So you can turn the LEDs on and off. So if this was in a place, um, if you had this in a bedroom for some reason, you could turn the LED off. Or if you just don't want the LEDs on, you can uh, disable them here. And then device discovery, I'm not sure what that does exactly. So if we go to system manager account here, we can change the username, or well, the username and the password here. You go to firmware here, you can upload new firmware. It doesn't look like it has a feature to automatically download the firmware. So I imagine you'd have to go to the website and see if there's one available. And uh, this is uh, something I find important, the backup restore settings. So you can download the settings and then uh, re-upload them later. So it's a good idea once you have a good configuration to download them, store them somewhere as a backup. And then if you ever have to reset it, you can restore those if you need to. And then we can go to log here and this is a, a logging here. And you can also set up remote logging. So that's everything on the left side. If we go up here to reset, you'll see it has, uh, you can reboot the device and then you can also restore to factory settings. So that's the basics of doing the online setup and going through the configuration. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have anything you want me to cover with this device, please let me know. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.